360 TV proudly presents Messages of Inspirational Stories. Broadcasting and live streaming to millions of devices around the world, including Roku. And live streaming to Facebook Live. Also on Amazon Fire TV. And to Twitch. Also, Android TV and Periscope. Broadcasting to Apple TV and YouTube Live. Proudly brought to you by our host, Donna Guinoa, producer and host, Michaela Vidal, host and administrator, and Jim Grant producer and host proudly brought to you by the six minute webinar.com and welcome to the show ladies and gentlemen today is friday august the 13th 2021 friday. And if you're here that means you yeah friday the 13th that's a lucky day you know why why? We're here, you're here, and we all survived COVID-19. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, Amen. Uh, oh, yeah. We've been talking about tourism all week. We started off on Monday with Dr. George Grant, giving us some great health benefits and some great tips and things of this nature. And one of the things that you can do when you're traveling, we were just talking about this. You know, those little blue light ultraviolet ray lamps or flat little lights that you can pick up anywhere. Well, I say yeah. anywhere, like a Home Depot or somewhere. Those little things, they actually kill germs and things of this nature. So if you go somewhere in a motel or Airbnb or wherever, you know, just pick up one, take it with you and just shine it all over the, the doorknobs, the water faucets, anything that people touch consistently. Right. Right. And that will also give you more uh, more confidence in, you know, what you're, you know, in, during your trip and all that, because everybody, everybody likes to feel safe. Absolutely. And, and Donna, you're going on a special trip. You got your blue ultraviolet light packed and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I am going on a special trip. Kind of excited about that. Oh, yeah, we're sure you are. Honeymoon. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, that's going to be a wonderful trip for you. And we're, we're just so, you know, glad for you and Edgy and so blessed that you're going to be together and have a nice honeymoon trip. And we just wish you the very best. Hope you're blessed with safety and love and all those good things and blessed in all areas of your life. You know, well, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. And there is a lot of places interesting to visit. Oh, my goodness. It's ah. just, you know, it's. It's almost as big as the world. Mm. I mean, seriously, in every single state, wherever you live or whatever mm -hmm. country you live in, there is right. always a place of interest that you can go to. And some of them aren't even the really huge names that you hear about all the time in mm. newsprint, in magazines, in social media. Sometimes it's just a little, little town down the road, you know, a piece. Oh, yeah. Because every small town, and I love traveling to small towns because every single small town has its own special flavor. Right. It normally has a colorful history. Mm -hmm. The people who uh, have businesses there, they're normally owner operators. They own their business. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's, you know, chains there too, of course. But I mean, you know, for the specialty places, because you can right. always go to, you know, a chain restaurant or a chain motel or something like that. And I'm not knocking those businesses, right. but I mean, they're always there. You see them off the interstate and everywhere. Right. But the special places, the Airbnbs, for example, the bed and breakfasts, the little special cafes and diners and things like that to get something to eat and museums and the boutiques. Yes. How the about gift, sh mm -hmm. gift shops, antique stores? Because 
I've never, I've been a lot of antique stores, but I've never seen two alike. <laughs> right. I've, I've not either. And I adore antique stores. Mm, yeah. I mean, you know, when you get to be my age, you can walk in there and see some things in there, antiques for sale. And you're like, I just used that yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but I'm not going to tell anybody. <clears throat> mine looks better than that one. So if that's worth, you know, $85, mine must be worth at least a hundred. <laughs> But it's really, you know, one of the things that we have in common, we both have a love for Arizona. My wife was born and raised in Bisbee, Arizona. That's where she was living when I met her. I met her at Fort Huachuca, Arizona, after I came back from Vietnam. That's where they, the military, uh, the Army sent me. I had 10 months left in the military, and that's when they sent me. It was Fort Huachuca, Arizona. And growing up in a small town in North Carolina, going to country schools, first part of my life. No one told me that you pronounce an H with a W. <laughs> you know? I think what you actually means Thunder Mountain, but it's an Indian word. Right. I believe it's Apache, if I'm not mistaken. It is Apache. Mm-hmm. Cherikawa. Yeah. Uh, Cherikawa. Okay. It's a Cherikawa. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, I remember when I went out there, it just blew my mind because you could see for 70 miles mm -hmm. in certain areas. I mean, practically anywhere in Arizona, there's no place in Arizona you can stand and not see mountains, north, right. south, east, and west. <laughs> well, That's it's a misconception for anybody out there who's not been to Arizona or uh, really has any uh, information on it. Everybody thinks, oh, my gosh, you live in Phoenix, Donna. It's just all desert. We actually have one of the most diverse states in the country. Mm -hmm. We oh, have, yeah. yeah, we have the biggest Ponderosa, um, mm. uh, Ponderosa Pine uh, in, in, I believe, in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. We have the Petrified Forest, which is one of the mm. biggest. We also have... Um, uh, oh, the Sonoran Desert, which is a, yeah. the home to the most saguaro cactus in, mm. in the United States. And mm -hmm. then we also have uh, out in Flagstaff, um, and I'm trying to remember the name of the mountain right now, and of course I can't, but it's where we go skiing. Mm. Um, but we have one of the highest peaks this side of, of the uh, Continental Divide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's just a lot of beautiful places out there. Uh, Oak Creek Canyon's another. I flew over that in a helicopter one time, and it was just amazing to see the orange and the red right. streaks coming up because uh, the helicopter pilot, he was a Vietnam veteran like I was. And I said, uh, are we going to be flying over Oak Creek Canyon? He said, yeah. I said, well, I'm looking forward to seeing that because I'd seen pictures of it in, in a magazine. Right. And it's like anything else. Pictures in a magazine. Wow, that's that's it. Looks nice, interesting. But seeing it, you know, with your naked eye, holy enchiladas, Batman. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, it's a different. And it's it's totally so, different than seeing it on TV oh or yeah. in a magazine. Oh yeah, you're exactly right. And and we're flying along in a you know <clears throat> bunch of choppers up there. And he turned around, and looked at me, and he's pointed down like this up ahead. You know. And so I'm, I get close to the door because we're flying with the doors open in a, in a Huey helicopter and no seat belts. We don't need no stinking seat belts, you know. <laughs> I mean, we didn't use them in NOM, so what do we need them here for, you know? <laughs> Who's going to give us a ticket anyway? <laughs> and uh, he has dropped that chopper down out of the formation. And I don't know how high we were. We were still several thousand foot up in the air, maybe three or something like that. But he dropped that thing down. Actually, we were a little lower than 3,000 feet. Yeah, because, I mean, you could, we were probably about 500 foot above the, the tree line there, the terrain. Mm -hmm. And whew, right over that thing, you see those streaks coming, you go like, wow. And you, you wish you had eyes in the side of your head as well as in front of your head. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was that. Your head, right. Yeah. I mean, it was that shocking. And, you know, we got the painted desert there and, oh, goodness, but. One of the places that we're going to center on is down in the corner, southeast corner of the state, a little county called Cochise. Mm -hmm. 
And from Cochise, you got cities uh, like Douglas down there in, on the very, well, it's pretty close to the east end of the or east side of it. At the very bottom, the sister city is Agua Prieta, Mexico. And then you come up a little bit, you got Bisbee with the, used to be the Lavender Pit. Lavender Pit's still there, but the copper mines and all that. Right. And then further up on the, as you continue north on Highway 80, before you get to Benson, you run into Tombstone, Arizona. And I'm telling you, there was one gunfight there mm -hmm. that set the stage for all of the Western movies. Oh, right. Because usually when cowboys and people out in the West had a, let's just say an ax to grind or something, they were going to settle with someone. It was more like peek around a building, take your shot and get out of there. But this deal, when the, <laughs> when the Earps and the Clantons met at the OK Corral, the Earps and Doc Holliday went down there to disarm them. Right. And they had been drinking, you know, the, Clant uh, the Clantons had been drinking most of the night. Doc was drinking, had been drinking, fact, been playing poker with one of them. Doc never stopped drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was on a liquid diet, let's say. <laughs> with <Doc. laughs> and uh, Wyatt was getting kind of mad at him. And he pointed his finger at him. Now, there's been several stories to it, but the most accurate story was that Wyatt pointed to them and said, you... Uh, gentleman, but he, he used three uh, initials. <laughs> you imagine what it might be. You've been itching for a fight and we're going to give you one. <laughs> and that's pretty much what, that was the spark that started it. Mm -hmm. And then it was either, you know, draw or whatever. But from that incident, that's where the Western movies all said, you know, I mean, who, some of you uh, old timers might remember Gunsmoke on TV that ran for oh, 20 yeah. years. We watched and how, that. Oh, yeah. Right at the very beginning, Marshall and Matt Dillon would walk out in the middle of the street, draw, you know. <laughs> and that was not the standard, was it, Donna? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, Tombstone was is really interesting. So let's go back a few years. It was actually okay. founded in 1877. Mm-hmm. Now, the elevation, again, that's what I was talking about earlier, folks, is that the elevation in Tombstone is 4,541 square feet. Mm -hmm. So where ASU is in Tempe, Arizona, it's right around 1,400 feet. So that kind of gives yeah. you a, an idea. In, yeah, 4,500 uh, feet. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's it's a lot cooler in Tombstone mm -hmm. than it is, you know, down in the valley. Oh, yeah. Um, Population. Now, this is really interesting. So population in 2019 is 1,209. Wow. It's grown a little bit since the last time I've been down there, you know. I but, mean, uh, but holy smoke, that's still small. So, oh, you know, yeah. That's why it's so important. You know, they rely on tourism. The, the mm -hmm. mom and pop stores, you know, the people who open those boutiques. Mm -hmm. They rely on the tourism for, you know, their existence. Mm -hmm. I first went to Tombstone, Arizona in 1970, and there never has been any type of industry there at, that to, you know, like you would normally think in any town. So tourism is their industry and right. they rely on that. And they have a lot of wonderful attractions there too. I mean, you like if you want to go there when it's beautiful and just perfect weather, the month of October in that area of Arizona is my favorite month. It really is. I mean, it's just it's nice and cool in the morning. It's not that hot during the day, but blue sky, azure mm -hmm. blue sky all around you. And sunlight, and I mean, it is just all. Oh. It's gorgeous. It yeah. is gorgeous. In fact, speaking of those mountains, the, the picture here, this is a picture of the Mule Mountains in Bisbee, Arizona. And you can see some distant mountains over here, over my left shoulder, if you get my finger right. My hand and my, my brain and my finger sometimes are on two <laughs> different wavelengths. <laughs> But see, that's quite a distance out there. That's what I'm saying. You can see for 70 miles. And look at that azure blue sky. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not Photoshop. That's just a real, you know, right picture. Well, and Tombstone was actually started as a silver mining town. Right, right. It was silver was found and mm-hmm. then it exploded. I mean, oh, people came, yeah. People came in from everywhere wanting to, you know, uh, take a strike claim, it rich. Get rich. Right. And so it really expanded in population, you know, what they say, dang near overnight to like, it mm-hmm. bloomed back then to over 20,000 people. And oh, of yeah. course, in today's statistics, 20,000 people is not that much. But mm-hmm. we're talking before the turn of the century, folks. Yeah. That was a boatload of people. It's a and 19th inter- century. <laughs> right, right. And the interesting thing is that back then during the Silver Rush days, Tombstone had over a hundred saloons. Mm. It had a multitude of restaurants. And of course, as in with any mining in uh, town, it yes, had a yes. red light district. <laughs> we were talking about the blue light for the, uh, you know, disinfectant and everything. What, what's the red light? Explain <laughs> it. <laughs> and then um, it also had, now this is really cool. It was also been known, it has uh, the original Arizona community pool, and it is still in use today. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. that is just really cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And then, of and, course, there was the, the Birdcage Theater. Oh, yeah. So it uh, was noted back in the day by the New York Times as the wickedest and wildest night spot between the Barbary Coast and Basin Street. It mm. has 140 alleged bullet holes that can still be seen today in oh, yeah. the ceiling and in the walls. Um, mm. And it also had the longest, now this is cool, did you know this, Jim? Had the longest standing poker game that went on eight years, five months, and three days. No, I did not. Yes. Yes, it yeah. did. I remember when uh, the town yeah. flooded mm-hmm. and it, and it flooded one of the, the, it started flooding in the streets and then um, they kind of had to fold. I think it was one of the mines backed up. Yes. And, yes, uh, it was. One, mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the mines backed up and it kind of folded mm-hmm. the town because the yeah. town went bust in 1889. Mm-hmm. It did. And one of the reasons why the mines flooded the San Pedro river. Now that's an interesting little river there. Right. Uh, I laughed at the first time I saw it, you know, being from back East, you know, and crossing the Mississippi river and they say the San Pedro river and it's nothing but a Creek. Right. And sometimes most of the time or a lot of times in a lot of places, it's pretty dry well dry. Bed. Yeah. Dry bed creek. Mm-hmm. And, but at Fort Huachuca, at the museum, they've got pictures of barges floating on the San Pedro River. And the San Pedro River is one of two rivers in the United States that flows south to north. A lot of people don't know that. Right. And I remember I was making a joke about it. And then someone said, well, you ought to go over to the museum. That's barges floating on that thing. So that got me kind of quite, you know, how could that be? You can't float a barge on a you know, little hardly anything creek right and i asked the uh the person in charge there at the museum i says that was taken to san pedro river and he said yes long about the turn of the century um 20th century there was an earthquake and most of that water went underground and that was the catalyst that flooded the mines because That's nobody cool. could possibly anticipate that and see that coming Right. But that's what happened there. And I'd like to add that what really impressed me was when I walked into the Crystal Palace, and it's still there to this day. Right. I walked into the Crystal Palace Saloon, and I saw that beautiful bar. Oh, I mean, this cool. thing is massive. This thing is long, and it, it, it is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, of course, the glass behind it and all that. <clears throat> And uh, of course, we were uh, there. Wa- there wasn't a hundred places to drink, but we were, it, you know, visiting their various establishments to contribute to their income. <laughs> we walked into Johnny Ringo's bar, 
<laughs> and I'm seeing these holes in the wall. And I'm thinking, what's that? One of my buddies, that's bullet holes. I saw, yeah, right. And I'm thinking, you know, they probably, you know, just, you know, doctored them up to make them look like bullet holes, but, you know, slap me and wake me up. Ladies and gentlemen, those were real bullet holes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a wild and woolly town. And actually in that area there, further south in Bisbee, that was known for the copper mines, the Copper Queen Hotel and all that. Bisbee was the second largest city. Um, how, how can I say this? Uh, from from Bisbee to uh, to San Francisco, there was no city bigger than Bisbee. And I'm trying to put it in proper context. It just came to mind just to show you how much when metals are available and people can get rich, right. it brings the miners. And uh, you, you want to know one of the reasons why the uh, the American Indian, the Apaches, they didn't care for miners. They didn't respect miners. Do you know why? Well, they, number one, they were they were hurting the land. Mm -hmm. That's were, true. You know, and uh, really being disrespectful, if you will. Mm -hmm. They were that. They were like having moles in your yard right. <laughs> or gophers. And uh, but really, the Indians did not really see they looked at them as being like human rats right. going into holes and tunnels and digging, coming out all dirty and making a mess. And they didn't really respect them. You know, they didn't, they didn't see the value in the silver and the gold and things like that. Of course, now they, they understood, don't get me wrong. They definitely understood turquoise and, you know, the beautiful stones and things like that, you know, and they, right. and they got beautiful, beautiful, you know, uh, decorate decorative things that they make jewelry and you know all sorts of things my it's goodness exquisite. yes yes those folks have a very very special talent that's been handed down from generation to generation generation and the stuff that i've seen some of the indian people make uh no manufacturer could even come close to their handiwork right no machine can have the eye and the heart and the feeling and the love that these folks put into their work. And so right. therefore I salute them because I tell you, they, I'd love to have a house full, you know, of some of this stuff. Yeah. I mean that sincerely because it's very, I love the Southwest. Well, and, and understanding it, something else for those of you who don't know, um, every tribe does, does their, if they make blankets or jewelry, they make it mm -hmm. a little bit different. Yes. Right. So I've got actual horse blankets from the uh, Indian population, the Canyon in Canyon de Che. Mm -hmm. And they're oh, absolutely wow. gorgeous. They're absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but they would be different than, say, the Navajo, the right. Right. The Apache, mm -hmm. the everybody has a little bit of different angle on it. Yeah, different flair. And the thing about the quality of work that they put out and the things that they manufacture, or when I say manufacture, the things that they hand make. Right. Uh, those things are made to last. <laughs> those things are made to last. I mean, you, you know, you can even be a little dumb in between the ears. If you pick that up, you can definitely feel quality. You know what I mean? Right. right. I mean, no, you don't have to go to night school on that one there, son. <laughs> That's one of them self-explanatory things. Right. And one of the things, too, I like about Tombstone is very unique. Being able to see the the, the, the gunfighting, the shootouts. And uh, we have a friend there, a couple of friends that uh, are involved in that. And uh, in fact, one of my friends uh, who taught uh, Lee and his brother how to do the fast draw was a gentleman from Bisbee. And Wes Flowers was his name. He was one of the world's fastest fast draws. He went by the name of Wes Fargo in the movies. And uh, he, was, uh, he was also, a, uh, in addition to being an actor with them, he was also a subject matter expert on the weapons of that era that they were using. And it was really, really great. To, I mean, have you ever seen anybody do fast draw? I mean, they are, Donna, I, I don't see anybody can fire a weapon that quickly. I and hit know, the I know. Clear yeah. leather and everything. Yeah, and hit the target. Hit right. the little balloon. Right. You know, it's whoa. crazy. It's yeah. crazy how quick they are. 
Yeah. It's kind of like trying to see a rattlesnake strike for the first time. You don't see the strike, you see the recall. Right. <laughs> they're, that, they're that quick. Yep, they are. I wish they I are. was making that up, but I've stood there and I'm going like, well, hmm. <laughs> You what know, just happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, you see the two balloons there, and, pow, and they got, we're talking a thousandth of a second, folks. Yeah. Thousands of a second, like 0 0.045, or I mean, it's, it's just, or 0.45 or 23 or something like it, It's amazingly fast. Right. I mean, it's just not like, you know, like that. I mean, it, I mean, they clear leather and everything. I mean, it just, Hand and eye, all that, my goodness, it, it just really, <laughs> it, it's, it's, in fact, go to YouTube and just look for some fast straw. Right. And uh, Wes uh, had a uh, little, I'm trying to think of the game, had a game named after him called uh, Fast Straw, Fast Straw Down or something like that. It's on YouTube. And uh, I love watching Wes whirl that gun in there too. You know, the way they'd whirl a gun and put it in there. I mean, yeah. oh, it was, it's just like kind watching. Like what Doc Holliday used to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, and that's something that we should talk about for a quick second. You know, there is also uh, some people have a misconception that because Doc Holliday suffered um, and subsequently died from tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> And that he was a, a drunkard. I mean, he was. He drank like a fish. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. a lot of people, especially back in, in Tombstone days back then, misunderstood him completely. Mm -hmm. And thought that he was just a dadgum drunk who couldn't, you know, shoot, you know, the broadside of a barn, you know, a foot in front of it. <laughs> when the actual mm -hmm. truth of it was he was actually a hell of a shot and a quick draw yeah. in his own right. Oh, yeah. he, and he didn't oh, back yeah. down. He had mm -mm. very well educated, was a true doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, dentist. Believe, mm -hmm. Yep. I believe he was the dentist. <clears throat> and he was very, very well educated. But, you know, mm -hmm. he didn't back down and he, uh, you know, he, he didn't mm -hmm. go looking for trouble per se. Mm -hmm. But if you were his friend, he'd back you 100% of the time, mm -hmm. all the time. And that's why he was with Wyatt Earp and the Earp brothers. Right. In fact, uh, talking about how people really uh, settled their differences in the old West afterwards, I believe it was Morgan Earp, one of the Earp brothers, I believe it was Morgan. <clears throat> he was playing pool and somebody shot him, shot him in the back from outside, shot through yes. the glass window, shot him in the back and he died of course. But, uh, <clears throat> they didn't. They never knew who it was. But Wyatt and them, they went on a vengeance, and they were <clears throat> taking. Let's just say they were paying everyone a visit who was possible. Right, right. Yeah, who was a possible suspect there? But uh, yeah, that's mainly the way it was. But the you know the way Hollywood got a hold of that because that was such a sensation. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you walk out and I mean, meet me in the street at high noon, and we're going to draw down. Right. <clears throat> but also, too, in addition to seeing the gunfights, there is a lot of neat places to go there. Uh, just walking around. You don't have to worry about traffic. Right. Because Allen Street's blocked off. You park and you, you're there on Allen Street and you can walk around and visit right. the different shops. There is no driving down there. Uh -uh. Used to be. Used to be. Right. But no more. huh? I think right. it's been like that now for about 20 years. They blocked well, it off. So. I'm not sure. I think that's about right. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, but you know, it's interesting because there's other things of interest. So if you're into ghosts, you know, mm -hmm. old ghosts, it is said that the Birdcage Theater is haunted by resident ghosts. And there have actually been, uh, oh gosh, I don't know what they're called on TV, but you know, the, the people, the paranormal who go out, the ghost, ghost hunters, people, yeah, mm -hmm. the ghost hunter people. Well, there's three or four of them out there. And every one of them have been to Tombstone mm -hmm. and have found some, some quite interesting results from their equipment. Mm -hmm. so, there's been a, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's been a lot of photographs taken and then they get them produced and who's that? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, standing that? in the background. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they see yeah. a vapor. Sometimes you can actually see a person and make it out whether it's a male or female. Right. And uh, yeah, the uh, in Tombstone there, they're at the Birdcage Theater, and they actually have ghost tours that you can go on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And I tell you, it's it's a wonderful town to visit. There's a lot of good places to stay. I want to mention some of the lodging right quick, if I may. And, and let's talk about great hospitality, Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People are friendly there, my goodness gracious, because they depend upon the tourist. Right. For you to come and visit their town, they do not take that lightly. Right. I like the Tombstone Grand Hotel. And that's a that's a wonderful place there to stay. Most of these places, I think all of them, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, Donna, but I think all of them are individually and privately privately owned. I believe they are, Jim. I believe yeah. they are. They got the Tombstone Sagebrush Inn. They got the Trail Riders Inn Motel and RV Park. And I'm just going over this real uh, quickly here. They got some bed and breakfasts. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's a good place to go for a bed and breakfast is crazy Annie's bordello <laughs> and they got the tombstone bordello uh b and b and uh doc holiday throat they they sell doc holiday throw pillows for your for your bed there and also to wyatt's hotel bed and breakfast virgil's corner b and b and they have vacation rentals and guest ranches uh, they have a guest ranch at the Tombstone Monument Guest Ranch. That's on uh, West Monument Road there in Tucson. They got the Lucky Cuss Cottages. And they got a little place uh, there, and I've seen these here. Katie's Cozy Cabins. Imagine you yeah. and your family going to a little cozy cabin and having fun like that. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. I think I still like to stay, take me and Evan go to the bed and breakfast there at the Bordello. I mean, you know, I might be... <laughs> I might get some thump therapy there, you know, that's for that's sure. Right. They got the Tombstone Nickel Cabin Vacation Rental. That's a neat looking little place there. It's on Northwest Rainbow Road. And I'm going over this. RV parks and campgrounds, yes. Uh, they got the Silver Belt RV Park, Stampede RV Park, Tombstone Livery uh, Stable is another place. They got dry camping, uh, Tombstone Dry Camping RV Park, Tombstone RV Park and Campground. Wells Fargo RV Park, and it's just amazing. And you can find all this, ladies and gentlemen, on TombstoneWeb.com. Tombstone, right. Now, one word is TombstoneWeb, T-O-M-B-S-T-O-N-E-W-E-B, -E -E then the dot com. And they got the, the attractions there, shopping, eating and drinking. Go so ahead. Much. Well, they also do... Um, uh, when they do their tours and, and you go, you can, you can go through Boot Hill Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And Boot Hill Cemetery was founded in 1878. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a long time, it was uh, sadly um, overlooked, if you will. So it was mm -hmm. overgrown. They've kind of brought it back to life. But the interesting thing, if you go through there, you will see regular townsfolk from way back up current, but... There's a new cemetery, you know, I say current, semi-current, but there's also outlaws buried there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of interesting history all the way around from, you know, from what's going on the street um, to, to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing too about Tombstone is that it didn't cost anything to walk around there or enter Tombstone. It's not like an amusement park or anything like that. It's a living town. It's not a theme park. Right. And there is no opening or closing hours of the town. And, uh, you know, of course, the businesses will open and close at, you know, normal times. But as far as you, if you want to get out and walk around at midnight or something like that and just enjoy the beautiful weather, you can. And, and the weather uh, is beautiful there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It really is. And it's just a, you know, I, I love the, you can ride in a stagecoach there. And there's a lot of unique things that you can do there in Tombstone. And I, I really like the gunfighter and ghost tours. That's a, that's a fun thing. That, and that's yeah. nightly at dusk. Right. And, right. And then to visit all of the, like you said, all of the places that still have the bolt holes in them, the mm -hmm. bars, the, you know, the saloons, uh, the birdcage. Mm -hmm. uh, theater and it's funny because when I was reading about the Birdcage Theater, 
um, it was said, of course, back in the day, because it was uh, when they say it was wild and woolly, they weren't kidding. Mm -hmm. um, and, and no respectable woman or man would cross that threshold. Mm -hmm. It was. Um, and the reason it was actually called the birdcage is <clears throat> because of the red light district within it. <laughs> so. And they they called it little bird cages for the individual room, shall we just put it that way, delicately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, they always supplied their own newspaper for the bird cage, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> we're gonna get in trouble here in a minute. At least I am. Donna's not, but I am. But it's really a, a wonderful <laughs> place to go. And my point being, and in, in what Donna and I wanted to share about Tombstone today. And in general, um, it's just amazing how, just amazing how we, you know, we, we need to get out and go to some small town, pick any small town, right? 20 miles from where you live, 100 miles from where you live, you know, whatever. Go there, contact the Chamber of Commerce, the Visitor Center, get some information, read up on it. And then plan your trip, but also to plan for the unexpected. So you want to be flexible. It's kind of like on the radio show this morning, we were talking about, you know, planning things out and all that. And I said, yeah, it's kind of like you go on a trip. You better make sure the spare tire is in the trunk and it's in good working order and you got the jack. Right. Because if you put it there, you'll probably, I think there's about a 98% chance you'll go on your trip, come back and have a flat tire. But if you leave any either one of those in the garage, what do you think is going to happen when you're about 100 miles from home? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, call it Murphy's Law, call it whatever you want to, but that freight train is coming. Yep. And ladies and gentlemen, we've been in, in talking a little bit. We've got to share something with you an event that Donna and I are so blessed to have here out of all blessed. of the, out of all the TV shows, our TV show was selected to house this event. And we're expecting about according to, to Vanya and her numbers. And this young lady, when she had her last summit on, she had the Sultan of Oman as the guest of honor, the King of Oman there as a guest of honor. And when she says we're expecting 2 million people, you can expect 2 million people. And she's put the information out to over 122 million uh, people uh, or to the media, it has an outreach of 122 million. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. And what they're not figuring in is what E360 TV and our little TV show brings to the party because right. we're bringing something in our picnic baskets for some uh -huh. fun. Yeah. And we're just honored and we want to share this with everyone else because, and incidentally, if you are a speaker out there, um, we're going to put our email address up there. If you'd like to be on the show, we'll be right back and tell you more right after this brief message. Coming August the 27th through the 29th, 2021, E360 TV and Messages of Inspirational Stories proudly presents Vanya Kusick Foundation Leadership and Communication Summit in association with the 6-Minute Webinar and E360 TV. Broadcasting live from E360 TV Studios to Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, Periscope, Twitch, YouTube Live, and Facebook Live Streaming. Be sure and register at the 6minutewebinar.com forward slash communication dash summit dash 2021 dash registration. And what an honor that is. And ladies and gentlemen, from time, yeah, from time to time, people asked us, hey, could we ever be on your TV show? Because you see the outreach we got, we see the coverage we got, and that answer is yes. And if you'd like more information, just email Donna or, or me at the Inspiration E360 TV. 
we'll get back with you on it and we'll see about how we can fit you into, you know, what we're doing with our theme weeks and all. But the answer is yes. Because you know why, Donna? Hmm. When we started this show, I don't remember who it was. Uh, it wasn't Don, it wasn't Bill, but somebody asked me, how did I visualize this TV show? What, what's it going to be? And I said, very simple, it's going to be a simple little TV show right. for the average person. Right. Because the average person can't get on a TV show. And therefore, you know, we, we reach out to people and we have certain guests come on with their specialty to enhance the theme week that we've got going for that particular right. week. And the reason why is because it's all about infotainment to the folks out there like you, because we have a lot of people watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, Android TV, and all the rest of those branded channels. Thank you so much because you could pick up, you got the power of the remote. We don't. Exactly. <laughs> And you can go up there if you watch this on your laptop, or as I call the slap top. Well, that's what you do. You slap it down, the top down, right? <laughs> but you could go up around that little upper red, uh, upper corner there, up on the right, and hit that red X, and we, we're gone. But right. we, we really appreciate you, you guys uh, appreciating the information that we put out because um, we're just simply a show for the everyday people, folks just right. like you and I, because. That's why we talk about things, interesting things like going on trips and traveling and having fun. And, you know, I tell right. you. And different things that you can do within your own area, whether you're oh, yeah. here in the United States. And we have a lot of viewings who are, you know, overseas uh, mm -hmm. in different countries. Oh, yeah. And it's, and it's, you know, it's the same thing. It's it's mm -hmm. going someplace not too far from your home. Mm -hmm. If you're able Absolutely. to get out and go sure. and get some yeah. air and, of course, be mm. safe. We, we yeah. always want to see you be safe. I mean, number oh, yeah. one, be, sure. be safe, be healthy, yeah. but get out there and explore and, and enjoy that time, you know, with your, with your, your family and, and have that moment because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm Jim, you know, me, I'm all about those moments because I don't think in life it's the big moments, you know, those big, huge ones. I just don't see it's them. I think mm -hmm. it's all the little ones oh, that, yeah. that build up that we remember. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. We have a couple of life events that we do remember that are huge, you know, oh, birth yeah. of our children, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but man, those little ones, they're the memory mm -hmm. makers. Yeah. Yeah, they are. You're exactly right. And uh, we know a lot of people have lost their jobs in 2020 and all that. And, um, you know, but you could still pack a picnic lunch, get some Frisbees or anything like that. Just go out and get into the sunlight. You, you don't have to go to the city park. You can find some place where it's just you. You can be alone and you with your family, play Frisbee, you know, um, and then sit around at night and tell ghost stories. I don't know about you, but I always love those. <laughs> I mean, scaring somebody is fun, right? <laughs> well, you know, the, the fun thing for me, when my children were little, of course, they're grown now. Now it's only my husband and I. But um, mm -hmm. when my children were little and we would be planning on, you know, I would plan a little outing with them. I would always involve my children. Folks. Mm -hmm. I would always involve my children and yeah. say, okay, who wants to pick um, that? What kind of sandwiches we're going to have? Who wants to pick what kind of drinks we're going to have and, and fruits and who wants to pick the dessert? And that way, because mm -hmm. I had three children and that way they all got to be an active part of it and that oh, they yeah. had power in the outing and it mm -hmm. made them feel, you know, feel better. And then it also you know, when they got in there and helped make it, it just made a fun time. And they oh, were yeah. learning as they went. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Donna and I, we also want to reach out to you folks that, uh, especially you that folks that maybe lost your job in 2020, you're trying to get going online and you hear all these different people, hey, do this. If you buy this program, you'll get this and, you know, yada, da da da. 
Donna and I will encourage you to do three things that won't cost you one penny. One is download or go to our six minute webinar.com forward slash free trial. Fill out your own six minute webinar on one product, just one. Now you can do several six minute webinars, but the six minute webinar is designed for one product, one program, one service, whatever your specialty is. Then one, you get at that, time. one at a time. Then you go to number two. And then you can go to Zoom free account. You can go to Upsplash, I think it is, and you can get certain pictures that you can put in there to, you know, emphasize your six minute webinar. You can download it to your computer. You can upload it to your YouTube channel or create a YouTube channel and upload it. And none of that costs one thin dime. And you can send that YouTube link to everybody on planet earth about your product and service, because if your product and service, let me say this, if you do your job right, you can post that. Say, Hey folks, to special interest groups. Let's right. just say if your specialty is, uh, I'm going to use Stephanie Dwayne's because it's so easy to understand during this six minute webinar, I'll show you three proven ways that you can lose weight. That's the first sentence of it. Right. And it could be anything. So therefore, people who are interested in losing weight, you would go into the special groups of people who are interested in diets, interested in this, da, 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 and say, I made a uh, six-minute webinar on how you can lose weight. If you like, if you're interested, please click here. How much does that cost? And see, therefore, you can start getting things going to put money in your pocket. And then you get in touch with me and Donna and we'll uh, get you some tour tickets there for Tombstone, Arizona. We can go see the gunfights, the ghost, <laughs> the ghost tours and all that thing. And, and uh, we're such nice people. If you buy our ticket and pay our way, we'll, we'll come with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kid, kidding about that. But most importantly, get some money flowing in your in your business, in, in your in your pocket. And that's our gift to you. And uh, Donna's still cracking up about us going. Uh, she's going on a honeymoon next week. I asked where they're going, what time they're leaving, and she's not said anything to me about it. Right? So I don't know where she's going. I don't know when she's leaving. So hmm, I wonder what she's <laughs> trying to tell me. I know what she's trying to tell me. I'm in a GNC status. You know what a GNC status is, don't you, Donna? Uh, go ahead and let them know, Jim. Yeah, got nothing coming, so stop asking. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it's just, th this is some of the things that we, we, we enjoy doing is giving back and Donna, my goodness gracious, of course, you won't be available for the next uh, week or so, but at Donna .com, my goodness gracious, you have, you're known as the high energy lady because you help people find their energy when they're drugged down. You may be sitting out there at home and saying, gee, you know, going on a trip sounds nice, but I don't have the money and I've got this problem. I got that problem. You need a shot of high energy because there's ways to do things. If you quit worrying mm -hmm. and start saying, I'm going to love life because I can live in the abundance of life. Right. Right. Tell them a little bit about the high energy and what that would mean to them, please. Well, you know, here's the thing that, that, we're just, we're just all go through life together, folks. And mm -hmm. we get stuck in the worry, the hustle, the bustle that we're in. And it usually comes down to three things, person, place, or thing. Mm -hmm. And that is where, you know, we get stuck in a negative energy vortex, if you will. And we sometimes are too close to the forest to mm -hmm. see where the real problem is. <clears throat> so, you know, clients hire me to, to help them understand what is going on. I've been stuck in this rut for over 13 years and I can't get out of it. You mm -hmm. know, I uh, had a client who, who tried five or six other various uh, coaches and various modalities, if you will. Mm -hmm. And there was just no breakthrough. Yeah. And when we got right down to the nitty gritty after three months, it was like, boom, mm -hmm. she, you know, she said I was free at last. So my, my program is custom. Uh, one, it's not a cookie cutter per se, because, mm -hmm. you know, 
uh, what what bothers you is not what is working or not working with somebody else. So I customize each of my programs to individuals to help mm -hmm. them come out and figure out and let's dive in together so that you get the most out of life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the thing I like about your program too, Donna, <clears throat> and I'm not knocking anybody else's program because obviously I don't know everybody's program, but I've seen several people in the business. They're very well educated, but it's, it's a passion of what they want to do, but they don't have any skin in the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm the kind of person uh, like next week, we're going to have Rennie Gabriel on get out of debt and, and create wealth at the same time. You right. don't want to miss that because going no. to have him on for all five days. It's, it's a, it's a recorded show, but Rennie Gabriel, oh my goodness. He, he fits in the same. Game. Yes. He was walking the streets mm -hmm. and alleys and the side of the road 35 years ago to pick up aluminum cans and plastic bottles. What if he get his hands on the sale at recycling centers just so he could buy groceries, put food on the table for his family. Right. And for him to be a multimillionaire, uh, I want to listen to somebody like that because I can relate to somebody like that. And like right. with Donna, I mean, she came through a very traumatic experience in her life, three brain surgeries, and she couldn't talk there for a while. And the word, her, the word in her brain could not flow off the tip of her tongue. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, her being diagnosed with MS too, um, she's got skin in the game because what she wanted to do was lift herself up and not let this, you know, all the things she was facing, all the worries, concerns, drag her down. And she was able to do that. And she says, hey, I can help others. That's why she created a high energy program that she's got. And it's, a, it's really a blessing. So if you're if you're looking for someone to help you get where you are to where you want to be, look for someone that knows what it's like to fall down, skin their knees and bust their nose. And they got up and, and made a, you know, made a success of it because they can appreciate where you're coming from. Right. The people because who are in it. Empathy in it. You yeah. Empathy. You truly understand. Yeah. You know, it, it's, I, I like to liken it to, um, you know, like when I was super overweight uh, many, many years ago and I did it on my own, but had I gone to somebody who was just um, had their degree in nutrition and never gained more than a pound or two in their life, oh, yeah. I wouldn't be able to relate to them. As you know, yeah. I was a hundred pounds overweight, so I would yeah. not be able to relate to somebody who who never gone through that. The reason I almost laughed then, when Donna was talking about that, what flashed in my mind? I was at a house party one time, ladies and gentlemen, and here was this gentleman. It's back in the seventies. He was all cool, calm, and collected. You know, one of these know-it-alls to be honest with you and one lady in there says how can you uh be a child psychiatrist if you don't have any children you know what he said to her Ooh. well you don't have to have a baby to be a baby doctor and he said it like that i'm not exaggerating he was wow. so far he had his nose so far stuck up it's a good thing he was living in arizona it's a good thing it didn't rain because if it rained that boy would have drowned wow wow I'm, I'm i'm not making that up and i just figured well he's not one of my kind of people right because right. uh but that's a classic example of someone that's got this air about them that think they're the great i am but if you look at them closely and what they demonstrate in their life they really are the great i am not Right. And that's well, kind of people you want to avoid. Want somebody who understands your pain. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, yeah. You know, if, if you can't understand their pain, then it, it's really hard to process and get through that. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's what it's about. So, you know, whether it's me, folks, or somebody else, and you need some help, reach out to somebody. Yeah, you got to connect with that person because you're going to be sharing some very personal things with them. Right. And you got to make sure you like them and you got to rapport with them. And even though this guy was a child psychologist, if my kid ever needed a psychologist. He'd been the last person on planet Earth, I'd call, because right. <laughs> there's no rapport there, you know. Right. And that, that is very, very critical. You got to have 
somebody, a, a partner in your life who is your friend, who can help you in your hour of need, who has the courage and you got a, enough respect for each other to see that person to say, just a minute, you need to reevaluate this. Right. And when and, you're and going honesty, good and say, way to go, I knew you could do it. Right. And the honesty to say, you know, you're, oh, hey, yeah. let's, let's get through this. It's, it's going to yeah. be ugly for a minute, but trust me, you know, I've been there. And mm -hmm. when you get through the others, when you get through the ugly, mm -hmm. it is so beautiful. It's oh yeah. So Spring, and that's when you get your highest energy. That's mm. when it comes out, folks. And yeah. you see life every single day mm. in a different light. And just imagine as we wrap up this week here about tourism, how would it feel to be able to go with your family or with, with friends or whatever and go on a vacation, go somewhere and not worry about COVID-19 a snotty nose or anything else, you know, mm -hmm. you can do that. You have the power to do that. And during this, uh, this week, go back to part one. It's on YouTube, Dr. George Grant. And we've had him on twice. And I'm telling you, Dr. George Grant, he is, he's worked with the CDC in the United States. He's worked with the Canadian um, board of health and from the bottom of my heart, when these doc, when medical doctors, normal medical doctors who are trained to write prescriptions for ailments, when Dr. George Grant talks, they listen. Right. You can get some great information there. You can buy from your own grocery store, your own place where you pick up vitamins, whatever. And you can live healthy. You can build your body up. You can have the blessed assurance and the confidence that you know you, you can live the life you want to live you're entitled to that don't let anybody kid you right. you were born and you were entitled to live in the abundance of the universe and that starts with loving yourself first and then loving yeah. others as i tell you right now one thing i love about love is that it never gets old no nope. I mean, look at your dogs when you come in the house and they show you love i mean that never gets old and right. uh, sometimes I wish my, some of my family members would take some lessons from the dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I've, got, I've got one dog and four kittens and, and I pretty much still get mauled when I come home. Yeah. 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 And, and pets are such a wonderful thing to teach kids about love and also about responsibility. Mm -hmm. And Donna, my goodness gracious, got to put my glasses on here and act my age. Our time is almost gone. It oh, my goodness. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play, play Rennie Gabriel's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. He is five days of how you can get out of debt and create wealth at the same time. And the information that you will get there you will not hear anywhere else because some right. of the things that I, that Rennie shared with us when we were, because I've known Rennie for a while, but when he got going, done his program, all that, because I gave him full reign. I says, Rennie, right. you know, this is your show. It's not about me. It's about how you can help someone out there struggling. Right. We want you to do what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there are a lot of single moms out there and there's a lot of people trapped in, you know, in uh, situations where, you know, they want to improve their life. They want to, you know, have a better life for their family. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not yep. at all. And to be able to buy, you know, groceries and pay the bills and have enough to do some other little things for your family. How dare anybody tell you you're not entitled to that? Because, yes, you are. You are. I also encourage you to go to YouTube. Listen to Earl Nightingale, The Strangest Secret. And yeah, Donna and I, we know what The Strangest Secret is. And I told Donna, I'm not going to tell you what The Strangest Secret is because I don't want to spoil the fun for you. <laughs> I love you that right. much. <laughs> and I can hear one of my buddies out there. Oh, yeah. Come on, Jim. Come on. Tell me. You get off that carcass of yours, that lazy carcass of yours. You go over to YouTube and you put, <laughs> put on them earphones, put them on stereo so to vibrate your brain and wake you up there, Bubba. <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. Well, we really want to thank each and every one of you for, you know, tuning in today and every day. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, you bless us by being here. 
Mm -hmm. And we cannot thank you enough. Oh, yeah, absolutely. From the bottom of our heart, thank you so much. Be sure and do love yourself. You're worthy of love. Love others. And most importantly, most importantly, decide for yourself that today, right here, right now, I'm going to live in the abundance of life. If you listen yeah. to Earl Nightingale's The Strangest Secret, Nightingale, just like it sounds, Earl Nightingale, The Strangest Secret, you'll see what we're talking about. Well, Donna, I guess I won't see you for a while, but uh, yeah, do me a favor while you're on the honeymoon. Would you? Yeah. Don't even think about me or the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim, I, I love you dearly. You're, you're my yeah. partner. You're one of my best friends yeah. in the whole world. But, uh, but there I are limits you. here, boy. <laughs> and, <laughs> I promise you I won't. <laughs> I hope you and Edgy have a wonderful time, a safe Thank trip, you. and you'll be in my thoughts and prayers for that, you know. And uh, Thank you. Hope Thank you guys you. have a wonderful, wonderful time. We are looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You both deserve it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got to go. We're out of time. They're yep. about ready to yank the, the old virtual, you know, hook. Right. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Be safe, folks. Have a wonderful weekend. Mm -hmm.